The member for Lanark Front and Lennox Addington. Pardon me, Speaker. Uh, Speaker, I move uh, second reading of Bill 89, an act to amend the Election Act with respect to the recall of members of the Legislative Assembly. <laughs> Mr. Hillier has moved second reading of Bill 89, an act to amend the Elections Act with respect to the recall of members of the Legislative Assembly. First, you understand in Order 98, the member has 12 minutes for his presentation. The member for Lanark, Frontenac, Lennox, Addington. Thank you, Speaker. It's my pleasure to speak and advocate for Bill 89 today. We are all here in this Legislative Assembly and all have the authority to enact and create laws of the land based on one very certain fact. We are elected by the people with the responsibility and duty to represent all people within our electoral district. What gives legitimacy to our office is that people exercised their judgment and with a plurality opted through marking their ballot, each of us as their choice. The people's consent is, a single, is the single factor that creates, determines and defines a legitimate representative democracy. However, I find it profoundly ironic, even bordering, bordering on hypocrisy sometimes, that there are some who, once elected, find the people's judgment lacking and irrelevant. There are members in all parties and in all assemblies who minimize, mitigate, or limit these very same people, our constituents, from exercising any further tangible influence on the functioning of their parliament or any further direct role in determining or requesting consent for the laws and public policies that we enact in their name. In short, their judgment is often no longer desired or wanted after our election. It is self-evident that if their judgment and consent is required to make this parliament legitimate, then their consent and judgment ought to be sought out and to be encouraged throughout our entire mandate. Bill 89 gives both meaning and effect to this truth. Continued and continuing consent will be required for us and all others to be their elected representative. Many people believe recall is an American concept. However, this would be an incorrect and false assumption. Recall of elected representatives was formalized into law over 160 years ago in Switzerland. However, I'll come back to the history of recall a little bit later. First, it's important to examine, explore, and illustrate the benefits, the value, and I believe the necessity of recall to ensure a well-functioning representative democracy. In my eight years as a member of this legislature, I have witnessed and observed a great many debates votes, hearings, and legislation. Arguably, a substantial number of these policies conveyed a benefit to some people, but often at the expense or to the detriment of others. In short, there have been many examples where good people have come to a poor decision. Our judgment as a collective is not superior, and it cannot be superior to the judgment of those who have chosen us. As in any business, career, or endeavor in life, indeed any individual or authority, it is more likely to be successful if there are appropriate checks and balances. Bill 89 is a reasoned and appropriate check and balance on our office in both, a positive, and neg in both positive and negative applications. As we saw in BC a few years ago, when the government of the day brought in new tax measures that were not identified in their recent election, the threat of both recall and referendum prevented that illegitimate tax policy from taking root and becoming law. At the same time as the people in BC were holding their members to account through recall and its first cousin referendum. The Ontario government brought in a similar tax measure 
under similar circumstances. However, the outcome was entirely different here in Ontario. People signed petitions by the tens and hundreds of thousands. People yelled and expressed their opposition. Two members of this legislature were susp suspended. I was one of them. But the new tax went through anyway, because the electorate is often handcuffed in the chains of a majority between general elections. Let me give you one more example. The NDP are now demanding more tools for people and seeking a referendum on, on the Hydro One fire sale. And I concur with that. It is a reasonable and appropriate request. However, we have no formalized mechanism to compel the government into enacting a referendum. Invariably, this call for a referendum will, will fall upon the ears of a silent majority in this House, and it will not happen. However, if we had a recall, had a recall mechanism, such as Bill 89, I'm extremely confident that this fire sale would not only be halted, but more likely, the fire sale would never have seen the light of day, and it would have been stillborn in the Liberal caucus room. Recall provisions cement two very important constructs and prerequisites in development of public policy and the creation of law. First, it demands of the government to bring forth policy that is both consistent with its electoral mandate and the expectations of our constituents. Secondly, and just as important, it compels the government to reach out, to grow, and to cultivate support for contentious or controversial but possibly necessary policy changes through engagement, consultations, and meaningful interactions, the hallmarks of a truly representative democracy. There are many more examples that I know of, and I'm sure that each and every member here can recollect that illustrate these points and their importance. E-Health, the 407, Skydome, Orange, gas pipes, to name a few. Ontario would be better off. We would be more prosperous and able to provide for our disadvantaged if we reduced the scandals that plague all governments. The benefit of recall mechanism is just that. It constrains and minimizes scandals and harmful public policy. Recall is the epitome of oversight and the zenith of accountability in a democracy. I believe it is a contradiction for those who preach oversight and accountability but do not permit recall. I'll just read briefly some of the mechanisms that I've incorporated in Bill 89 um, for the recall. An eligible voter in a member's electoral district can apply to the chief electoral officer for the issuance of a recall petition. No application for a recall petition may be made during the year following the member's election or one year before the next scheduled general election. A proponent of a recall petition has 60 days to return the petition to the chief electoral officer with the signatures of eligible voters in the electoral district, which represents 25% of the total number of votes cast in the prior election. In that case, if those thresholds are met, a by-election is then held to fill the vacancy, and the recalled member is free to be a candidate in the by-election. There's a lot of myths about recall, and I'd like to dispel a few of them. In British Columbia, the only province that has it in our country, there has been 26 attempts for a recall petition. Only one met the threshold, and they have had that recall uh, mechanism since 1991. One successful. In that particular case, when they met the thresholds, the MLA chose to resign instead of uh, facing the uh, by-election. As I mentioned, it's been about 170 years since 1846 since recall was formalized in Switzerland. In Switzerland, it's been attempted on four different occasions. 
None of those occasions resulted in them meeting the thresholds. And Switzerland has a very, um, very low threshold. Unlike British Columbia, that has a 40% threshold. In Switzerland, it is between 3 and 12%, depending on which canton the petition is done. But as low as 3%, and in 170 years, we've seen four attempts in Switzerland. We often we know of the recall of Governor Gray Davis in California. That was made a lot of news. What we don't know, or what we don't see, um, there had been 117 previous attempts at recall petitions for the governor of California. 117 never met the threshold. And in California, the threshold is 20%. Right? Once, only, and only once. Um, recall petitions are practiced and in use in 34 states. In March of this year, that hallowed institution that our constitution and our democracy is modeled on, Westminster. In March of this year, the UK Parliament passed a recall bill for the first time. The thresholds vary significantly, as I mentioned, Switzerland between 3 and 12 percent. In the United States, in different state legislators, uh, legislation, legislative assemblies, it is anywhere from a low of 10 percent in Washington, um, or um, Montana has uh, the lowest threshold at 10 percent, and Washington has the highest threshold at 35 percent. My bill is pegged at 25 percent, and I, and I do believe that there is, um, there is no magic number. There is no perfect number. I am willing and open for discussion and debate on that, but um, but it's clear these misconceptions about recall are misconceptions. And I think I've taken appropriate and reasonable steps within the legislation to minimize any potential abuse or to mitigate potential abuse. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. For the debate.